Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's currently mid-April 2020. Grounding Side 1 has claimed we've had a large increase on range in the AIM-1 with the AIM-120C AMRAM around this time and we need to go and test it out. So we've got some empirical evidence that we can look at in the previous versions. Now this is, to be honest, a long time before the F-16 came out and quite a long time before the F-18 came out, I think. Our last time we did this was back here, max range, medium range, air to air kill. Let's go and see when that video Hello is and done. Hello and Stop, that was done on the 21st of May, 2018, two years ago. If you watch that through, it was an optimal shot of altitude, speed, everything optimal, and we managed to get 46 miles. The limiting factor at that point was the radar on the firing vehicle, the F-15 at the time, it could only lock a target at about uh, just below 50 miles and so that was our problem there we now have radars that can lock a lot further with the f-16 and f-18 so we're going to try them out with optimal ballistic shots so welcome to the experiment we've got a hostile and aggressor which is what we, we consider an optimal case a tu-160 which is going to fly as fast and high with a large radar cross section as any aircraft 51,000 feet 1200 knots although he's not actually going to be able to maintain that fully he'll do his absolute best we've got two planes an f-16 and an f-18 uh, the f-15 is simply not optimally suited to this because it's a low fidelity radar it can't lock this guy far enough away the f-16 and the f-18 have got basically the same radar as far as dcs care cares in terms of its capability to lock and fire missiles so we'll try both of them elements that would constitute the maximum shot are a the kinematics of the missile how high and fast can it actually fly b the battery time on the missile it'll only fly for a certain amount of seconds after that its battery will die its radar will die and it just won't be a missile anymore and the third thing is the limitations of my radar. How far can I lock this guy away to be able to get a guiding radar lock? I'm going to optimize our radar for long range shooting. Got our missile selected. It's pretty much us done. We've got two missiles on. It would be more optimal to have uh, just a single missile, but this is close enough for what we're doing, I think. Target's there. We're going to bug him. It's going to be nicer to fire with a bug rather than an STT because it means he won't know that we're firing at him until the missile goes pitbull. So, 90 miles range and closing. And we're going to fire at 78 because it's the furthest we think we're going to get. In fact, we're going to try at 80. Okay, we've got a Fox 3 going out there. We are at, we're just before 80 nautical miles. You can see on our DLZ we are miles away from what it could consider a long range shot. Our current speed is 439 IAS, which is 1112 knots true and ground speed at 49,500 feet. Bad guy, 49,000 feet, 1160. This is a pretty good opportunity to get a record here so all we've got to do now is maintain lock uh, we need to get time as well it is 0 45 so we can count the second before the battery dies and go godspeed little missile all i've got to do is keep a radar lock until this thing turns on its own radar hostile is set to not avoid because we're just testing here we don't want him to try and evade Eight miles, and let's just have a look at the kinematics of this thing. So, Jesus, or it's still at 2,000 knots. It shows how much farther would this thing could go if we didn't have to worry about the distance of my radar can track, the uh, battery life of the missile, and so on. Let's watch him down. Hello, sir. I got a surprise for y'all. Oh, and we got him. And he is on fire in every possible way. So, that was 80 miles. Um, and we were just within the battery life of the missile. Now, what we'll try now is to knock it up again. If you're wondering about the Hornet, we've tried that in the background. It gets exactly the same results as the F-16. Its limitations are the same. It's got basically the same radar, the way it works in DCS. Uh, the limitation we found at these optimal conditions is actually the battery life of the missile. So let's try it again. Okay, so we just looked at the time. That took 84 seconds. We used 84 seconds of battery time there. We're not actually sure what the maximum battery time is. It also seemed to disagree. So we're going to try it again uh, for a little further. Try firing 85 nautical. And slightly below there because of delay in trigger time, but. Enough. I also had some rudder on, which is typical of me, but hopefully it won't affect it too much. Otherwise, all parameters should be the same within a few feet and a couple of knots. Alright, let's get leveled there. Okay, we are at 
12 miles. It's going to miss. It's going to miss. That's a battery problem. So it's just dropping down now. It's just run out of guidance, run out of battery just before uh, it's hit the guy, as you can see. So we're really close to the edge there. Okay, so here we've got the shot that missed. It's all creation at 37 seconds. And let's just check that missile. Out of interest, how high does it go and so on. Some missiles are seen, so that's 91,000 feet. So that is properly going into space. And it just keeps its speed, look. And so we've got uh, across there. That would be pretty much his impact. And a time is 07, so let's just quickly work that out. So it was what, 23 plus 60 plus 7. Uh, so that was 90 seconds. So the one that hit, in fact, we'll go back and just double check the timings of the one that hit. So we've got the missile being fired at exactly 80 miles at uh, 045. And hit at, uh, we can get it there, 029, already worked it out, but let's just go and quickly double check, 15 plus 9 plus 60 of 84 seconds. So 84 seconds it hits, 90 seconds, uh, yeah, 90 seconds, and slightly before 90 seconds is when it ran out of battery. So let's say, as a rule of thumb, 85 seconds flight time with an A120C before it runs out of battery. So it looks like the determining factor at this point is no longer the ballistic of the missile. The missile will go a lot further. It's got plenty of energy. It could probably go another 30, 40 miles, well over 100 nautical miles. The radar of the plane can go a lot further than this. It can lock up at about 100 plus miles. And uh, it's the battery life now is the problem. Battery life with these pretty much optimal conditions the battery life is eight, about 85 seconds, so after that, it's just going to switch itself off and no longer guide. So, the cool thing is, in absolute optimum conditions, we can do probably up to about 82 mile shots, which is pretty, you know, getting on for AIM-54 stuff, which is pretty amazing. This range will, of course, scale down. The lower both planes get, the slower both planes get, the less this will come down, but this is max optimal. So we've increased from 46 miles. It's the best we can get with any weapon, any configuration, jammer on, jammer off whatever, two years ago, and we're now up to 82 nautical miles, so nearly a doubling in AIM-120 range in two years, which is interesting and quite cool. Any closing comments, um, RC or the stream? Nope. Good, I hope uh, that was useful and see you later.